This week on InCycle, the Tour de France is here and we look at French darling Romain Bardet. You know, yeah, the, it's very special to ride with, yeah, with this crowd along the road to so support the French rider. It's the first of our exclusive four-part behind-the-scenes series at the Tour as we follow the fortunes of Etix Quickstep. The Tour de France means for me stress, uh, a lot of hard days uh, within three weeks, uh, but also very nice memories. We follow up with our new Dutch national champion, Dylan Groenewegen, on debuting at the Tour de France. To be able to ride in the red, white and blue for a whole year is a very nice feeling, especially since you can wear it for three weeks in the Tour. But first, we bring you all the news and gossip at the Tour with our lead-out. The lead out returns for the Tour de France and each week we go behind the scenes and give you all the backstage gossip. The 4th of July marked Independence Day and Peter Stettiner thought he'd bring some American razzmatazz to the Grand Boucle. I got my red, white and blue sunglasses. Even says Team USA on the little lens there. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a reason to celebrate and trying to push our team chef to make burgers for tonight, so. <laughs> do you think he'll do it? Maybe, we'll see. I mean, usually it's a rest day thing, but I just told him, hey, it's great race food. I mean, it's a complete meal if you make it healthy. I mean, you got carbs in the bun and protein in the meat and even a little salad with the lettuce tomato, so can't go wrong. With Wales making it through to the semi-finals of the European Football Championships, Garan Thomas had plenty of added support along the road. I believe that you went to the same school as Gareth Bale, is that right? Yeah, 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 and uh, Sam Warburton as well, so uh, the school's doing, doing all right. Do you remember much about Gareth Bale in those days, a few years apart, I suppose? Yeah, I was a couple of years older than him, so never really uh, had much to do with him, but obviously heard rumours about some, some good footballer. It's great to see so many Welsh flags out there on the roads. It's just uh, incredible, probably the, the most from any country. Or maybe I just happen to see the, see the Welsh ones all the time, but uh, yeah, it's amazing the support we get. Who would have thought a celebration podium dance at the Tour of Croatia would have created such a fan following? Sonia, do you get asked more about your win in the Tour of Croatia or your dancing? <laughs> maybe the dancing? <laughs> I don't know. And can you tell us where you've got your moves from? Uh, maybe I got it from my uh, papa. <laughs> it's good that he can dance, but the cycling is the best one. <laughs> and Sandra, do you mind getting you and your dad to do the dance together? <laughs> Fabian Cancellara will be riding his last Tour de France this year, and to mark this special occasion, his team, Trek Segafredo, have given him a unique colour scheme. There's a special bike for uh, Fabian for his last Tour de France. Uh, Factory is one of our uh, new Madone setup and uh, with the special colors. So they represented all the jerseys that Fabian wears since he was U23. Uh, then later on he has the Mapei jersey on and uh, Fasa Bortolo and uh, Saxo Bank CSC arriving to Leopard and uh, later on with, uh, with our actual jersey with, uh, with the Traxic Alfredo logos. Uh, I think he's uh, because he's a uh, sort of thanks to all the people that uh, worked with him uh, during this uh, long period. At this year's Tour de France, the story of cycling's greatest sprinting generation has continued. Kittel, Cavendish, Greipel, 47 tour stage wins between them and duking it out on cycling's biggest stage one more time. Mounting a challenge against the trio is a daunting prospect for the likes of Dylan Groenewegen, especially if it's your first Tour de France and you're only 23. It's of course very nice to race against those men. I raced against Kittel, Cavendish and Greipel in California and on the ZLM Tour, also in Cologne where I beat them. 
and that was a great feeling. I respect them, but it will also be very cool if I can beat them here. While the much-touted next generation, like Caleb Ewan or Fernando Gaviria, still considered too green for La Grande Boucle by their teams, Groenewegen comes to the tour with the full backing of Team Lotto Jumbo NL. With the aim to be mixing it with the sprinting big guns, repaying the team's faith is high in his mind. It brings some pressure and stress, but also a lot of confidence. And that's what we work for so hard. We hope for the best. The last few weeks is going very well, so I hope it will also work out here. Groenewegen has been able to take maximum confidence into the start of the tour, and justifiably so, since his stage victory over Kittel and Greipel at the ZLM Tour at the end of June, the Amsterdammer has bagged himself a very special jersey, that of the Dutch national champion. The win had special significance for his team too. It was the first time since 2009 that Holland's principal team has produced a Dutch champion. That's a very nice feeling, of course. To be able to ride in the red, white and blue for the whole year is very nice, especially since you can wear it for three weeks on the tour. It's the largest Dutch team, so to get the red, white and blue, well, it was a while since Coast Murenhout had it, and now the team has it again, and that's something very important. Groenewegen has taken the step up to World Tour with Lotto Jumbo NL in his stride. Having first caught the eye with Rumpot last year, 2016 has proven an even better one. With the firepower of a yellow and black juggernaut to launch him in the sprints, this year has undoubtedly felt like a breakthrough for the youngster. Last year was also good with two victories at Rumpot, but this year with seven victories and the sprint train. Yes, I think it is some kind of breakthrough. And now also with the jersey from the Dutch Championship, that does make a difference. This year I'm focusing on the sprint and that's going very well in the team. And the training is also focusing on that. So that's all going well. And I hope we can show here what we've been training for all these weeks. But now comes the biggest challenge of his career to date, the Tour de France. For someone who until now has been used to racing in Europe's flatlands, Le Tour is likely to come as somewhat of a shock. Getting ready for the first Tour experience has meant mixing up the race schedule and managing personal expectations. I did California, which also had a lot of climbing, but the Tour is something completely different. My goal is mostly in the first week. We'll see day by day how it goes, if I survive but it will be super if I can finish the tour. It's very special to ride those mountains and we'll try our very best. While the tour's magnitude is something never yet experienced by Groenewegen, it unsurprisingly has been a moment he's been looking forward to. With the new jersey fitted and ready to race, all that's been left to do is seek the advice of those that know the tour well. They've already told me that it's very different from other races. The whole circus around it, the people, the crowds, the mountains for three weeks. You don't get that anywhere else. They've warned me about all of that. It's all new for me, and we'll just have to see what we make of it. I've been dreaming of it since the age of seven when I first started cycling. And now with the red, white and blue in the Tour de France, it's a very nice feeling. Well, he has all the characteristics of a champion. That is to say, he is in top physical condition, but he also has the mental attitude of a champion and is aggressive in a necessary, positive way. He is someone who really understands his craft, is positive, strong, and always wants to push on to the next level.
Well, on the bike, he's different to how he is off it. He's determined, very aggressive and always on the offensive. He's always researching how he can improve his performance. For example, a new technique or a new style. So he's very intelligent on the bike. Off the bike, Roman is not your average kind of racer. He went to university and has a lot of different cultural interests that might be different from the typical cyclist. He likes the good things in life, such as good wine, culture, and he's really pleasant to be around. Romain Bardet, one of French cycling's biggest hopes. Just 25 years old, he already has some impressive achievements, especially when it comes to the Tour. He won a stage in 2015 and has three top fives in the young rider category, as well as sixth and ninth in the GC over the past two years. It all highlights Bardet's potential. Yes, Roman took part in our cycling development scheme at our training centre for two years and he turned out to be one of the best amateur racers in France. Naturally, he went on to become a professional with the team and during his first year as a professional he continued to show great quality. Since then he's continued to develop and is now recognised as a very, very good racer on the world stage. It was clear from the start of his professional career that he was a guy with bags of talent and someone that put in a lot of effort, as we saw during the Tour of Lombardy. And then he rose rapidly through the team and took his chance to start racing at a very high level and really showed what he can do. Yes, I was really happy with everything especially the last couple of Tour de France, because two years ago he finished sixth. And last year he had a fantastic stage victory and finished ninth overall. He's superb at raising his level on the big stages and there's a lot of hope for him at this year's Tour de France. Yes, Romain winning a stage at the Tour de France was an amazing moment for him. It showed how good his ability is. He'd won it long before the finish line. It was a fantastic victory. And, as we say in cycling, he won it with his legs, full of force and power. It was a very emotional day. Always a lot of people along the road and, um, yeah, you know, when... People maybe just care about taking their own journey and, uh, you know, yeah, the, it's very special to ride with, yeah, with this crowd along the road to, to support a French rider. Yeah, it was a good experience. My third Grand Tour and, um, yeah, um, pretty good third week with uh, some attacking in the climb and, yeah, some offensive style, so I really like it. Yeah, it was it was a good emotion to win in the Tour. Uh, I was... I was both uh, yeah, second time on the, on the podium, on the mountain stage, so I was close to it. And uh, to finally achieve this goal, it was, it, was really, it was really good. Going into this year's tour, leading his team in the GC and with the French public hoping to put an end to their 31-year wait for a French winner, there's a lot of pressure. But Bardet's keeping his feet firmly on the ground with his tour goals. To improve and to do much better, so we will see the the form that, uh, that it can, can be, but uh, yeah, hope to be a good GC and uh, go for another stage. Yeah, hope to be a little bit higher in the, the overall, but uh, at the end, it's always good to be in the top 10. It's never easy to be in the top 10 on the Tour. Whilst Bardet may be keeping his cards close to his chest, his team have high expectations for their promising rider. I think he'll be a major player at the top level in the cycling world, especially at the Grand Tours, and other classic, more difficult races. He has all the elements to become a world-class racer. You can never really tell exactly how someone's career will unfold, but he has the potential to have a great career. Welcome to our first diary film as in-cycle track edits quick step throughout the Tour de France. 
Making his debut is Frenchman Julien Alaphilippe. Tony Martins also looking to prove himself as one of the world's best time trialists. Hoping to climb his way up the GC is tour favourite Dan Martin. And also returning to the tour is Marcel Kittel, who's on the hunt for stage wins. The Tour de France means for me stress. Uh, a lot of hard days uh, within three weeks, uh, but also very nice memories um, together with my team, also uh, with all the spectators on the road. If I look back now, it's two years that passed by. And um, yeah, since then, uh, I really yeah, tried to, to work to the tour um, in 2016 again as a goal to work for it, to, to be here, to be in shape. And now it's the moment, so also for me, I can feel this is, excitement is coming up now and I really want to show myself. I think we have we have a pretty open team. I mean, in every stage we have almost somebody who can go for the win. So, of course, we have uh, Marcel Kittel for the flat stages. We have Alain Philippe for that for the stages where it goes like a, a small climb just before the finish line, and we have of course Dan Martin who proved this year already that he can can ride the last kilometre uphill, uh, one of the fastest of the peloton. So it's it's going to be for us quite exciting to, and, uh, and hope, uh, let's hope we win a stage pretty quickly because then it's more and more easy. Thank you. Thank you it's difficult to, for me to realise uh, I'm, uh, I am on the, in the start tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, I'm really, really happy about this and... Uh, I want to enjoy with my uh, my team because I have a lot of confidence with uh, with the guys, and uh, I hope we will uh, win some stages. Uh, it's so good. We are here having a good time, having a good atmosphere. We also try to come that that the two don't come too close to us, that the pressure don't gets too big. I mean, you also can make more of it out of it than it really has to be. We are here riding a bike, uh, that is what, what we can do, what we can do best, and uh, I'm pretty sure the, the success will come. I think the first seven days, first week, uh, they are important for me as a sprinter. There are a lot of opportunities, especially with uh, the first stage on Saturday. I guess a lot of teams are nervous and for sure from all the 22 teams there are also some that really want to try to go for it in, uh, in the crosswinds and then we have to see how the race um, develops. The objective always has been that he just has to care about his last 250 meters. It was the goal of the beginning of the year to give him really a train where he can rely on and he can trust. So first, the guy in front of him is going to be Sabatini. He always knows where, where Marcel is and Marcel trusts him uh, blindly. The sprint was a little bit chaotic, but I think the fastest today won. If you want today, you take yellow, and if you take the yellow and the victory, there's this kind of effort in the team, and uh, tomorrow uh, you go to another uh, goal, and then you go on, but you have already this, and now we, we have to chase again tomorrow. Yeah, I thought it's going to be a really painful move. I'm so strong on the climbing tonight. 
Stage two, I mean, there's opportunities. You know, it's, it's the tour. There's, there's, there's always opportunities there that you don't expect as well. And I think that's the key to this race, keeping an open mind and keep concentration every day and just don't try not to let any opportunities uh, go about taking them. Maybe Sunday is a good opportunity for Dan, for me, when the final is hard. And uh, we will see, but uh, I am uh, really motivated about this and uh, I'm looking forward. Sagan hit the front and then he felt that his head went, so he slowed down a bit and that made Julian think he was dead. So Julian jumped and then suddenly hit the headwind, I think. <laughs> That's what I could see anyway. It was like slow motion sprint. Wait till I see more. Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> it's a it's a good pleasure to for me to to have uh, the the white jersey. It, uh, it's a surprise for for me. But uh, okay, now I take day after day, and uh, today I'm for, honestly a little bit disappointed uh, because I was so close to the victory. I think Quick is not a normal team, you know. We uh, we start every day thinking of the victory, and. Uh, yeah, it just it maybe hurts even more when you come so close two days in a row at the biggest race in the world, but it just gives us more motivation to keep trying. That's all for this week. Join us next time, but until then, keep up to date with us on social media.